Tamara Holder is a former contributor for Fox News, where she also had her own show covering high-profile sports controversies. Hi, I'm Tamara Holder, and welcome to Sports Court. But in 2015, her life changed completely. Former Fox News contributor who settled with the company after she reported that she was sexually assaulted. I had a man pull out his penis in his office and shove my head on it. After reporting what happened, Tamara's contract wasn't renewed, and she was left without work. Then, the company's owner, Rupert Murdoch, publicly dismissed her story. It's really painful to have everything stripped away from you when you think you're doing the right thing by standing up for yourself. I'm Amanda Knox, and I've also had to overcome a campaign of people who didn't want to hear my side of the story. Now I want to know how women today are fighting back against those trying to keep them silent. I'm here in Chicago to meet with Tamara Holder. Tamara signed an NDA, so I don't actually know what she's going to be able to talk to me about. But from what I've gathered, the picture is she had lunch with a boss. He invited her into his office afterwards to further discuss work opportunities. He poured them tequila shots, barred the door, took out his penis and tried to force her head down onto it. And I want to talk to her about what it means to be betrayed by the people you trusted, by your own colleagues, and further, to have her story dismissed. Nice to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me here. Of course. It's beautiful. How long did you work at Fox? 10 years. I always wanted to be on TV. I started my law practice and would put money from my law practice into a publicist and mm. whatever to get there. It was just, it was a passion of mine. As a left-leaning contributor for Fox, Tamara wasn't popular with the viewers. But she pushed through the negativity she got online and thrived in a competitive environment. Let me ask you a question. Right. I'm actually going to let you finish your answer. I know this is oh. shocking. She was looking for bigger career opportunities when she found herself shut in an office with Fox executive Francisco Cortez. The reason why I was in that office was because I wanted to work. It was a meeting about work. Can you walk me through what happened? It was horrifying to feel trapped. The first thing that I thought of was, I can't run out of this office and scream for help. I can't. When you're in a situation like that, you're thinking, am I going to die? Am I going to be raped? Is somebody going to see this? Is somebody, do I have help? Do I have anything? And it's one of the safest buildings in the world. There's bulletproof glass, and I'm not safe. Do you remember what you did immediately afterwards when you escaped? All I remember is saying to myself, I'm going to go back to my desk, and I'm going to be OK. And I'm just going to get back to work. What was it like talking to your lawyers about what had happened? First, I went to my, the agents. And he said, if you say something, you will forever be toxic in television. So I went away to Jamaica. And I came back. And I said, I thought about what you said. I am going to keep my mouth shut because I just want to work. I just want a career in an email. And he responds, good choice. After the assault, Tamara worked at Fox for over a year without reporting it. Welcome to Sports Court. I'm Tamara Holder. The list of what made you decide to go against the advice of your agents and report the incident to Fox? I wasn't OK. I was literally sleeping on my walk-in closet floor in my apartment in New York City. I was losing my mind because I just had kept this inside. Around the time that Tamara reported the incident, Fox was fielding several allegations of sexual misconduct levied at executives of the company, 
so the story was largely buried. Longtime Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson filing a lawsuit against Ailes on Wednesday, alleging pervasive sexual harassment by Ailes. Francisco Cortez was fired, though he claims the relationship was consensual. And he sued Fox, saying that the company was making him a scapegoat for its larger sexual harassment issues. The lawsuit was dismissed, both when it was filed and when he appealed. Tamara eventually settled with the company, and as part of her settlement, she had to sign an NDA. What motivated you to break the NDA? I wanted to be believed, and, and I thought that I was until Rupert Murdoch said that this was all fussy, that it was just Roger Ailes. How harmful has the whole raft of allegations about sexual harassment at Fox News been for the business? Has oh, that's all nonsense. Um, there was a problem. Uh, with our chief executive, and there are other things. Um, but did it which depress? probably amount a bit of flirting, you know? When somebody says, no, this is wrong and this is abusive, you can't say, no, you're, you're lying. It's a very scary time for young men in America when you can be uh, guilty of something that you may not be guilty of. And that's where we've gotten, where I think that we're going to see a lot of backlash for speaking up punishment the other way. Did you feel punished for speaking out? Of course. I don't have a job. Tamara struggled to find work in TV after leaving Fox. Eventually, she gave up and moved back to Chicago to pick up her law practice again. I represent men and women in the workplace who've gone through what I went through, sexual harassment, sexual assault, any kind of hostile work environment, something that's unsafe. I currently represent an enormous group of men and women against Twin Peaks restaurants. They're the new Hooters. I met one of Tamara's clients in the class action suit, who was a waitress at Twin Peaks. She told me some of the things that women at her job were expected to do. Um, they said it was gonna be like B-dubs, girl next door. We were told certain outfit requirements and we were excited for it. So six months into working at this restaurant, they started making us wear lingerie, bikinis, show less, and then they started grading us on our bodies. So it was not even like a restaurant. It was just it was it was hard. a hostile, yeah. degrading environment. And the crazy thing is, is that people truly think that girls signed up for this. Mm. Did you feel like she understood your case better than anyone else you could? Oh, talk? there's I can't name anybody else better than Tamara. Tamara help me, like, become stronger. Ever since the Me Too movement erupted, there's been a lot of discussions about NDAs. How do NDAs contribute to this, like, cycle of abuse, do you think? Fear. An NDA says, if you open your mouth, I'm going to take a large amount of money question is, are you paying me for my silence? Or are you paying me for the damage that you've done? And in an NDA is wrapped up into a settlement agreement for the damage. And so it's really two things combined into one amount of money. Hmm. Have you ever felt ashamed in this whole process? I stood up for something to prove something that I haven't proven, to say I'm not toxic. I am gonna get another job in television, right. but I, <laughs> I don't have that. What do you think you've learned from this whole experience that you wanna take with you or that you wanna share with other women? I've learned that it doesn't get easier, that no amount of money cures the pain. Peace of my soul is gone. And I can't get it back. So the only thing you can do is just wake up and help somebody else. And I just hope that I'm doing that. I think you are. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. Thanks. In the end, Tamara didn't have an easy choice to make. Either keep silent 
and maintain her career or do the right thing and speak out and pay the price. It was a price Tamara should never have had to pay. A choice Tamara should never have had to make.